What's up, YouTube? It's your Lawrence here for KingD353 here, and, well, this is going to be kind of an interesting video. You see, yesterday, Birdkeeper Toby made a video in which he made his own Elite Four, essentially, as with him as champion, he made a setup for what the Elite Four would be like if he were champion and essentially controlled the Elite Four. This concept looked interesting, and I haven't actually uploaded anything of value in a while, so I figured, why not go the hand at this? So this is what my Elite Four would look like if I were the champion of a region. Let's start this off. So, first off, apparently the Elite Fours had gimmicks? I never noticed this, but supposedly in Gen 6, the Elite Four had a gimmick. That gimmick being that of royalty with, you know, knights and a chef and media and beauty. I, d I don't know how to equals royalty, but that was apparently the gimmick of the Elite Four in Gen 6. And Toby had his own gimmick of his own Elite Four, so I decided I'm going to go all four, four, f full force of mine as well. Give myself a little gimmick. The thing is, I must admit, I'm somewhat of a failure. I actually have two gimmicks for my Elite Four. The main gimmick of my Elite Four is the soul. My Elite Four members represent portions of what I feel, at least, makes up your soul as a being. Its secondary gimmick is that of a kingdom. And you'll see how that comes into effect when you reach my chamber. But don't worry, it all comes together in the end. Heh, <laughs> it all comes together. I think Toby made that joke too. Whatever, let's go on! This is, well, not exactly what my building will look like, but this is somewhat what it will look like. Similar to how the Elite Four in Kalos looked like a castle, mine would look like a cross between a castle and a temple. A castle because of the kingdom gimmick, and a temple because I feel like a temple is the best place to go soul searching, so yeah, my ki a kingdom and a temple. This it obviously wouldn't look exactly like this, but this is just something to, you know, give you a rough idea. So first for room one. Room when you walk into to it, you will simply find a corridor. This corridor will be lit with torches all about the room. In the middle of these torches, you will find Trollumbo. Trollumbo of Lolosaurus is the first Elite Four member. Now in Toby's video, all the Elite Four members consisted of pre-existing show characters, but the way I see it. If the champion's gonna be a new person, so should the Elite Four. So my Elite Four is comprised completely of people from my life. Trollumbo represents the burning passion, the drive and fire of the soul to continue and to succeed. As such, he starts off the Elite Four. I also feel like it's just really funny to have Trollumbo start off the Elite Four, because Trollumbo's one of those people that I consider to be superior to me in every way, shape, and form. So you're starting off someone better than me. It's ironic, and I find it hilarious. So, yeah. Trollumbo, my first ever ally on YouTube, and someone I consider my better. He is the first Elite Four member you will face. In this room, surrounded by torches. These torches that represent the fire in your soul. So, do you have the fire to beat Trollumbo? Let's see. Trollumbo's lead Pokemon is a Talonflame. For obvious reasons, a quick a quick striker and a hot head itself, it is the perfect representation of running head first into your challenges with the fire in your heart. His other Pokemon include Darmanitan, a Pokemon that shows off Trollumbo's personality quite well, as Trollumbo kind of acts like a fool, but he also has a bit of intelligence to him, as Darmanitan acts like a fool normally, but has its Zen mode as well as it being a fire type, so again, the fire in your soul. He has a Magmortar as well, because I think Trollumbo would find Magmortar quite cool. Also, I feel like Magmortar's Thunderbolt would be able to help out the whole water weakness, and his Earthquake would be able to help out the whole rock weakness. Don't have much of a ground weakness, though. We will also have a Rotom Heat, because Trollumbo is a bit of a chef, so I felt it was fitting to give him an oven. 
Trollumbo's ace Pokemon is a Blaziken. This Blaziken will indeed be able to Mega Evolve. And, of course, who better to show the flaming passion of the soul than a goddamn Blaziken? Once you beat Trollumbo, you will enter a dim room. This room is completely dark, except for a f well, in this picture, it's just a lamp in the corner, but I'm thinking more two dimly lit torches in the corners. So the room is ver barely visible. This room represents the darkness in your soul, the sadness, the depression, the anger, the fear. All of the negative traits of your soul is what this next person represents. Meet Metal FH. He is a brother of Trollumbo from Lalzasaurus, and similar to me, he suffers from depression, which is why I feel he's the perfect person to represent the darkness of the soul, as well as his emo haircut and his quiet nature. He you would he would definitely blend into the darkness if he truly wanted to. And what better time to face Metal FH than after you defeat his older brother? Metal FH is very unique in the fact that he's going to be the only Elite Four member whose lead Pokemon is also his Mega. That's right, he will lead off with an Absol, not just any Absol, a Mega Absol. His second Pokemon is a link to Cholumbo in a sense. I felt it would be poetic to give the brothers a link. So, Metal FH's second Pokemon, who I'm gonna go all fanfiction-y here and say that, story-wise, Trollumbo gave it to him as his starter, is a Hound Doom. It was a Hound Hour originally, but now it's a Hound Doom. And it is his second Pokemon in his Elite Four lineup. And his connection to his brother, as his brother is a Fire Trainer and he is a Dark Trainer. His third Pokemon is Pangoro, because big, powerful, fighting Pan... Panda, why, why not? His fourth Pokemon is a Sharpedo, because sibling rivalry is a thing, so it makes sense to have a Sharpedo there to counteract Trollumbo's fire. Now, there's another very unique trait about Metal FH. While his lead is his Mega, his Ace Pokemon doesn't match his type. Metal FH's Ace is going to be Mimikyu. What better way to show off the negative emotions in the mind than a Pokemon driven by envy, sadness, and loneliness? Mimikyu is the perfect person to represent the darkness in one's soul. Room 4. When you enter this room, you will, be fi you will find yourself in a garden. This room is entirely pink, and there are pink roses scattered about the walls. You will find lovely little Sakura petals across the floor. And in front of you, you will see my ex-girlfriend, Kyo. Although, for the sake of this, she's going to be called Bailey, because reasons. <laughs> so yeah, when I thought of the innocence of the soul, the happiness, the kindness, the first things I fought to were two of my exes, actually, Kyo and Mizu. And since I have a, a picture representation of Kyo, and because I felt the Pokemon matched her better, she is the one who's going to- I keep calling her Kyo, no, she's supposed to be called Bailey. And there's a reason why I'm calling her by her real name and not her character's name. I'm calling her by her real name because her lead Pokemon is a pun. A very lazy pun. Bailey's lead Pokemon, not matching her gimmick, because her gimmick is actually fairy types, not grass types. But her lead Pokemon is a Bayleaf, because Bailey, Bayleaf, she's going to kill me when she sees this, but I don't care. Also, for the sake of not making this a joke, her bay leaf will indeed have the, um... What's it called? I can't recall what the item is called. Eviolite! Her Pokemon will have Eviolite, so it has boasted defenses in exchange for the fact that it's not a Meganium. So yeah, Bailey leads off with bay leaf. Her second Pokemon is going to be an Azumarill, because, well, she needs a physical attacker. Her third Pokemon is going to be a Wigglytuff, admittedly for solely selfish reasons, as I myself love Jigglypuff in Smash Brothers, so I wanted Jigglypuff to get some representation, so Kyo has a Wigglytuff. I know, I know, this is bad writing, this isn't how you make a successful Elite Four, and I apologize. Her fourth Pokemon is a Sylveon, because who better to represent the innocence of fairies than Sylveon? Kyo's ace, and once again her Mega Evolution, is a Gardevoir. 
it's actually kind of ironic because Keo I've is kind of a very frail person, so it's funny how the vast majority of her team are bulky, with Gardevoir being the exception. And even then, Gardevoirs competitively at least tend to have a very bulky build. But yeah, this is Keo's team, fairies, and they represent the innocence of the soul. Now this is admittedly where my soul metaphor falls down a bit, but I still feel it works in the end. In the final room, you will- I haven't really decided what the room will look like, which is why you see this dark room with a silhouette. But essentially, the final room's gonna be an epic final confrontation-like area, similar to how Lance had his. And this room is meant to represent the final challenge. Working hard, getting it done, and finishing the final task in front of you. Basically, this represents hard work. Now, you guys aren't actually going to see a picture of the gym leader this time around, because... Not gym leader, the Elite Four member, because the final Elite Four member is my real-life rival by the name of Caleb. I felt it made sense to have him the final person as Elite Four, since my final Elite Four would be, you know, getting work done, finishing your task, and just ultimately doing, rather than feeling. And, honestly, Caleb is the hardest worker I know. I also feel it's funny to once again have someone superior to me in every way between you and me, so... Who better to have be your final opponent than one, my rival in life, and two, another person superior to me? But that's enough of that. As for Caleb's team, I was having a lot of trouble deciding whether I wanted him to be a fighting trainer or a psychic trainer. Ultimately, I went with fighting. Caleb's lead Pokemon will be a Mian Shao. Solely because of the fact that Mian Shao makes a good fighting type lead in competitive play with a Choice Scarf and U-Turn. Caleb's Mian Shao will be based off competitive play. Next up, Caleb will have a Metacham to represent the fact that he is indeed an intelligent person. After all, what better w Not to mention, Metacham actually does show off the concept of hard work quite well, as Metacham- Meditation, the monk's lifestyle in general, is extremely hard to keep up with. If you are able to do that, it shows great discipline and great willingness to work. It's just a perfect representation of what this entire room encompasses. So Metacham's is next Pokemon. Afterwards, we have Machoke. I mean, not Machoke, Machamp, a Pokemon who focuses his everything on exercise and getting swole. The perfect representation of putting the work in and being determined to complete your goal. Now, this next one will change depending on what logic we're going off of. You see, I'm not sure if we're basing this off of video games or just a regular real life team. If this is based off video games, his fourth Pokemon will change depending on the version you have. One version, he will have a Hitmonchan. The other version, he will have a Hitmonlee. Now, if we are not going off of game logic, then Caleb will be the first ever Elite Four member to have six Pokemon because he will have both Hitmonchan and Hitmonlee on his team. Caleb's ace is once again a mega evolving Pokemon in the form of Gallade. Upon beating Caleb, you will finally enter the main chamber of the castle, and this is where the royalty gimmick pops in. This room represents the end goal. Once you've balanced all the parts of your souls, once you've found peace, and once you reach your soul, your mental peak, and physical peak I suppose, basically your soul peak, once you achieve balance, you will reach the top of your game, and in my case, the top of my game is the title of King. Upon walking into this room, you will see me seated upon my throne, with my trusty Lucario kneeled in front of me, bowing to his king. Atop my throne, you will see a Butterfree sitting there, looking forward directly at you. Two of my Pokemon already visible to the opponents. This is where things get fun. To my right, Gardevoir and Gallade will both teleport in at my side. To my left, a Blaziken will fall from the roof, and Mimikyu's shadow will form, coming up next to Blaziken. My entire team is before you, and foes of you with very, very good eyes can take note of the fact that every four of my team members are the aces of the Elite Four. That's right. 
Why? Well, I feel like this makes a lot of sense in two ways, as well as makes me look better. Way number one, this makes sense. I am a king, and it is a king's duty to make sure his people are safe, happy, and healthy. That's how I see it, at least. Anyone who says a king is just meant to rule, fuck you. A king looks after his subjects. He does right by them, which is why I feel it makes sense for each of my Elite Four members to have one of my Pokemon on their team. It also makes sense because one part of the soul we can't forget is bonds. We all form bonds, and our souls are all connected to one another. So I feel it even makes more sense in that sense to have my soul connected to that of my Elite Four members by having them use my team as well as me. You will also take note of the fact that three of the aces were able to Mega Evolve. That is because I can Mega Evolve my entire team. Not in this match, mind you. I am not saying I can Mega them Evolve them all in this one match. But rather, I am saying I am so close to my Pokemon that the Pokemon who can Mega Evolve are all capable of it. But for this battle, Lucario will be the only one with the ability to Mega Evolve. But yes, this is my team. Butterfree, my friend atop my head, my lovely Gardevoir waifu, and my Knight Gallade at my right hand, my starter Blaziken, and my lonely friend Mimikyu to my left, and my loyal servant and best friend Lucario stands up and turns around to face you. And thus, the final battle begins. I hope you guys enjoyed this little telling of my little version of the Elite Four. I'm sorry for it not being the most impressive thing ever, but hopefully you all, mainly Bird Keeper Toby Senpai, enjoy the show. Like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see all of you lovely people later. Deuces, YouTube.